Uh, I do want to thank uh, very much Jim Dyer uh, for being our presenter here today on another one of our XBSS uh, board webinar topics. Um, I was at a board meeting at St. John's in Shrewsbury, I believe it was last year, and Jim, you can correct me if I'm wrong if it was earlier than that, but Jim was kind of doing a presentation and an update to the board about uh, the work he was doing and had also mentioned some of the success they were finding with a program called Free Will. And I just found it an interesting topic and I thought a topic that many of our boards uh, continue to ask about. Um, you know, our fundraising and advancement programs are a key revenue driver for, for all of our schools in our network. And frankly, for most Catholic schools in this country, uh, they do need those advancement dollars to help support the programs. And estate planning has, has been a little bit of an elusive topic, I know, for a number of schools. Uh, so again, I thought this would be a good, uh, wise topic. And so for that, I'm appreciative to have Jim Dyer here with us. Like I said, he is the Director of Leadership and Planned Giving at St. John's in Shrewsbury. Uh, just told me it's his second year uh, at the school, celebrated uh, an anniversary. I know he started mid-year in the cycle. So Jim, welcome. I'll let you take it over from here and appreciate your time. Thank you, Patrick, for the introduction and hello to everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Um, it was a real honor for me to begin my role at St. John's in late November of 2021, uh, having been a graduate of St. Bernard's High School in Uncasville, uh, now part of the Zverian Brothers School. Uh, sponsored schools network, but at that time, uh, a school of the Diocese of Norwich. And I'm uh, excited to have this opportunity to share some of the information about our gift planning program and some of the components of our partnership with Free Will. So with that, I'll begin a screen share. Um, for today's presentation, there's really four main things that I'd like to share with you. One of which is our philosophy and sort of our origin story behind the emphasis on this type of giving, which is not necessarily exclusively related to will making and estate planning, but rather non cash giving in general. And here at St. John's, we're viewing this uh, effort with free will as sort of one cog in an expanded view of the ways to give to the organization, share a little bit about what free will actually is and how we came to choose that partnership, share with you some impact and how it's helped grow our legacy giving society while at the same time um, growing our engagement with a very important generation of younger uh, donors, the millennial generation, and then actually share a few slides that are the interface and the user experience with the free will tool itself. Um, this is the proverbial fine print that I thought was worthy of, of sharing. Um, as Patrick shared when he saw me present on this topic in a briefer format in May 2023, he thought that the information would be of general value to the XBSS network. So um, this is simply a webinar to share what, what was the thinking of our establishing such a partnership and how has it gone for us so far, um, I'm exclusively an employee of St. John's and not for, uh, not of free will. So I'm not uh, here to act as a sales representative uh, or, or push their services on you in any particular way, nor is there any gain uh, by doing so. And in fact, St. John's has, uh, has a subscription with free will for a three year period. So we are actually paying them to avail ourselves of their tools and their services. Our philosophy here at St. John's as we, as we look at non-cash giving in general is that this is not exclusively related to things that come to us after a person dies. We're really looking at looking to expand our communications about the best ways for people to make a gift at any time and for any purpose. Uh, why did we decide to have this focus on non-cash gifts? Because that's where the money is. In the United States, 90% or more of wealth is tied up in things other than cash. So it really makes the most sense for to educate people about the opportunities to give in new and different ways. Uh, it's certainly advantageous for the charity because it results in larger gifts and it's advantageous for the donor because there are, are a variety of tax advantages often that are very helpful when people give in this manner. It's also a good way to build through these larger, more meaningful gifts more mutually beneficial relationships 
relationships and engagement are at the crux of all development and fundraising work. It's unfair and unjust to simplify it to just sales and transactions. So by focusing and educating our communities on the benefits of this type of giving and encouraging that type of giving it enables us to have much more meaningful, deeper relationships with um, the people associated with our schools. Uh, some of the examples of, of non-cash giving where a lot of American wealth is currently held are here stocks and mutual funds, obviously donor advised funds, the qualified charitable distributions that come from IRA um, required minimum distributions. Um, I heard a, a colleague from the Harvard, uh, Harvard University's gift planning department draw the metaphor of when we go to the grocery store, we don't limit our shopping to simply one aisle. And that typically in American fundraising, there's a lot of emphasis on cash donations. Um, it's a little bit too limited. So since people tend to give from their surplus, why limit the ask to only cash? Let's work on educating constituents about the benefits of giving and other forms where they actually will have greater surplus. Um, why in terms of plan giving is it good to focus on bequest? Um, again, it's where the money is. There's a very high return on investment in estate planning and asking for bequest. The average American bequest is actually um, just over $10,000 and it's substantially higher for those that come to us through free will. It's the most popular form of plan gift of all the plan gifts that are transacted in the United States. 90% of them are in the form of a simple bequest. Um, once you're in someone's will, you tend to stay in their will. The average number of wills that uh, an American person makes is, is one um, for those that actually have them. And more than two thirds of Americans don't have them. So once a person's decided to make a legacy commitment to an organization, it tends to be something that lives with them uh, for, the, for the duration of their lifetime. And of course, because they are legacy gifts, they tend to represent those things that are most meaningful to the donors. So our number one priority um, at St. John's was to educate our, our community about the benefits of planning to begin thinking about the creation of their legacy. Some of the things we try to convey to, to people are sort of three main reasons about why you'd want to have an estate plan. State plans provide clarity for the management of your assets, um, and it avoids the decision being made by authorities like the government um, rather than yourself. I had a colleague from an estate planning company in uh, Auburn, Massachusetts, say to me, well, geez, if you, if you die without a will in Massachusetts, there actually isn't going to be an estate plan for you, but it's made by the federal government and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and I can guarantee that you're not going to like it. So. Um, we try to convey to, to the folks in the St. John's community um, this benefit for uh, you, you controlling the destiny as to what happens to your assets after you die. It, it provides security and peace of mind and relieves the burdens on your family, both financially and emotionally by having these turf wars about who gets what. And it also ensures that the lost, the lost revenue for your family after your passing um, and lost income is preserved in some other fashion for them as well. And lastly, it gives you the opportunity to create a legacy, that legacy that lives with your, your family members and your descendants and those things that you care about most deeply outside of your family, charitable causes, schools, et cetera. One of the things that the educational process that we've tried to engage yeah, and does is try to break down the barriers for why people don't have wills. The statistics are such that about two thirds of Americans don't have wills. And often it's said that they don't know where to begin. They're afraid of what it's going to cost. And there's an emotional roadblock because it's a confusing, uh, in depth process for people. So a lot of people do nothing until they can know everything or do everything. And the top reason, statistically, based on this information that, that, that free will has compiled over time is procrastination. So people are just waiting to, the, to have the opportunity to begin to, um, to make their plan. Why do we begin to want to have a partnership at, at Free Will? We were looking for an efficient way to arm our community members with a tool 
that breaks down the barriers um, and simplifies the idea of creating an estate plan. So efficiency, number one. Um, the partnership with free will also is communications centric. So it provides the opportunity to provide educational, persuasive communications to the folks in the St. John's community. It's helped us enhance our legacy society, the Theodore James Reich and Legacy Society here at St. John's. And it also, also helps, helps us get clarity about the legacy aspirations of our donors. An anonymous legacy really is no legacy at all. By getting folks to identify St. John's and identify the particular things that are meaning to them, we're able to have a lifelong dialogue with them and ensure that their legacy at St. John's lives in the, in the manner that they wish beyond their past. And it gives us the opportunity to um, share the story of St. John's in new and different persuasive ways um, to convince folks that the, the benefits of St. John's that they have seen as either a current parent or graduate of St. John's are worthy of sharing for future generations. Um, free will, what is it and what does it do? Free will is a, was founded by um, a gentleman named Patrick Schmidt and a college friend of his named Jenny Stradling, who are associated with Stanford University. And they created the, this tool to reduce points of friction for making non-cash gifts. Uh, Patrick Schmidt in particular was involved with change.org and President Obama's campaign in terms of fundraising. And President Obama's campaign was one of the first ones in the United States to really in a broad-based way, embrace text to giving donations. And what you saw with President Obama's successful fundraising was that there were a, a lot of small donations from uh, a vast, vast number of donors for the first time ever. While more old, while, while more old-fashioned political fundraising uh, was centered on the traditional checks or credit card gifts online, the text to give made it uh, especially easy. So when, when Patrick Schmidt first got married, he and his wife were interested in uh, setting up an estate plan as they were expecting their, their first baby. He was trying to think of some opportunities based on his fundraising experience with President Obama and change.org to create something that would reduce those same points of friction when it comes to estate planning. And the idea of free will was born from there. Um, first and foremost, free will is a tool. It's, it's an online, computer-based interface that works very similarly to a TurboTax type tool if you've had experience with that. It also comes with the dedicated and professional advice of a partnership. And they also help with content creation. Um, their best practices content based on what they have come to know about the estate planning and non-cash giving industries while celebrating the voice and brand of their particular partner institution. Since 2017, when Free Will was founded, uh, nearly 900,000 estate plans have been created. Actually, since I made these slides about three days ago, a colleague and I attended the Free Will webinar today on the topic of direct mail, and they actually eclipsed the 900,000 uh, estate plan mark um, in terms of what they shared today. And they actually went over the 9 billion mark uh, recently in terms of number of requests, requests that have been left. I shared earlier that the average bequest in the United States is $10,000. The average bequest that's left through free will to charitable organizations is actually $60,000. And there are now more than 1,300 nonprofit partners that free will has. They offer something called the Smart Giving Suite. We talked earlier about the non-cash giving vehicles um, that were more associated with current giving like DAFs, stocks, and qualified charitable distributions. At St. John's High School, we opted not to um, purchase the Smart Giving Suite because we do have a nice body of donors who are already supporting St. John's with those, with those particular vehicles. So we didn't feel that we needed to um, to enhance by, by having this, um, this add-on to, to, to the partnership. Um, works very similarly though, if you do have 
have those tools with a TurboTax like interface that actually makes um, makes customized electronic forms for submission to ease the processing of gifts with either a particular donor advised fund manager like Fidelity or Charles Schwab, um, stockbroker or mutual fund company, brokerage management companies, uh, and those folks who administer IRAs for required minimum distributions. Uh, and they also have branched into tools that aid donations by crypto. Um, that's kind of on the cutting edge. It's not something that St. John's has seen a whole lot yet, but we are hearing from some younger um, donors and constituents uh, that they do have some crypto and do begin to invest in crypto a little bit. We haven't had a whole lot of action on, uh, on that front here at St. John's. Uh, the planned giving suite is, is the array of tools that St. John's decided to go with. Um, first of all, it's got the will making tool for the folks who live in, in California. It's got a uh, customized tool that creates revocable living trust and pour over wills. Those are some uh, complexities and, and specific vehicles um, relevant only for folks that live in California. Uh, the wills that are created are valid for and based on the laws of all 50 states individually. So when you indicate your state of, of residence, um, you are able to create through free will, a will that is valid in all 50 states. You now can also create the advanced healthcare directive document. In some states, those are called living wills or healthcare proxies. You can do a, a power of attorney form. And you also can create a revocable living a revocable trust um, if you are a nonprofit partner of free will. That's a vehicle that can help shelter some of your assets prior to prior to your passing to avoid to avoid uh, the complexities of probate and the expensive process therein. The will making tool allows you through that TurboTax like process to create a will in about 20 minutes. Um, we also have the ability to have, have our constituents report to us provisions in their existing estate plan that they may have made with a lawyer or with some other type of tool. Uh, at St. John's, we actually have had uh, one individual uh, notify us through free wills tool that they did make a provision for us in their existing plan. And it also, and very importantly, can help you manage the beneficiaries of your non-probate assets. You are things that exist like insurance, brokerage accounts and other retirement accounts don't pass through the probate process, but rather because there are our beneficiaries um, pass outside of probate. It's become increasingly popular for individuals to leave um, the residuals of retirement or brokerage accounts to charitable organizations, either in full or on a percentage basis. So simplifying the process for people, number one, to think about their beneficiaries, um, organize them, and to perhaps make a charitable organization a priority is of help. It's, it's very common, especially for em, em, employer-based retirement funds, for um, the same beneficiary that you put into place on the day that you started your job to be there well into retirement and in your life situation may have changed drastically. You may have, uh, you may have been married, you may have been divorced, you may have had children, you may have had grandchildren. So to plan the beneficiaries and prioritize accordingly um, is a great value as well as the important vehicle for encouraging receiving some non-cash gifts. So what do you get with a partnership with Free Will? You get a branded customized set of Free Will websites. So they are, they are free will tools. They live on freewill.com. But in the case of St. John's, they're followed by slash St. John's. There is St. John's branding and St. John's verbiage that uh, Liz Withers, our director of communications, and I worked on when, when they were set up to celebrate the values of St. John's High School to have, have imagery of our current students, our St. John's logos, um, all integrated into the website. So the wallet lives and is hosted by Free Will. Um, it's a seamless transition in terms of the user experience. We also get dedicated and professional advice and resources. 
we got a partner success strategist and a content writer. So there's a dedicated person that works for free will that helps me on a quarterly basis. Think about what communications might be most sensible for the goals that we have for our program. And there's a dedicated uh, person at free will who actually prepares the content for us. There is a enormously deep repository of webinars and white papers on all kinds of philanthropic topics, on all kinds of demographic topics. Um, today, I attended one with a colleague about the topic of direct mail, which was generally centered on um, cash giving, but uh, very useful in terms of being on the cutting edge of, of that particular aspect of philanthropy. Lots and lots about generational giving and non-cash giving as well. So that's been an, ex an extremely uh, valuable part of the partnership that I've been able to uh, avail myself of. There is a print marketing library of a, of a variety of samples for all philanthropic programs. There are samples of postcards, brochures, um, permanent giving guides, and um, anything you could possibly imagine that you can actually drag and drop and brand on your own and, uh, and, and send right out. And they've branched into two tools that are associated with artificial intelligence. One that's called Willie and one that's called Sophie. Willie is a comprehensive artificial intelligence tool that's actually available to the general public to try. That's for um, all charitable nonprofit organizations. And Sophie is one that is for religious-based nonprofits as well. Um, in fact, you can indicate the particular religious tradition and particular branch of Christianity that you're interested in, and there are the artificial intelligence tools can, uh, can help you if you're interested into delving into, into that world um, as well. So they've been neat to experiment with. We haven't used any of those professionally franking at St. John's, but I did play around with it one afternoon and I got a rather interesting, I thought rather good email that was generated to, um, to, to potentially use to introduce uh, topics related to philanthropy at St. John's. Um, and you also get the, the comprehensive communications array, their best practice content um, in our voice and our and uh, we'll touch on this in a little bit. The results of analytics, there's a dedicated portal that notifies uh, the nonprofit partner of any activity that's happened in free will that concerns or is a benefit to St. John's. So here at St. John's, um, we began our partnership in the fall of 2022 in October, and we kicked off our St. John's campaign on the third week of October for National Estate Planning Awareness Week, which is obviously seems to be a, a, a creation of the uh, estate planning lawyers lobby. Um, we did a New Year's resolutions campaign in January of 2023. Um, we did a spring campaign that extended from mid-April into mid-May. And uh, then again with the estate planning lobby, Make a Will Month, August uh, 2023. So we did four campaigns. The general advice of, of free will is to do electronic campaigns on a quarterly basis. So far we've had more than 1400 members of the St. John's family visit our site. We had 116 estate plans that have been created. 19 primary bequests. Um, and when I started in late November, early December of 2021, we had 28 living members of the Theodore James Reichen Legacy Society. We now have 47 members of the society. And, um, and since the partnerships begun through the portal, uh, we've come to learn of more than a million dollars in commitments for St. John. Some of those are primary bequests. Some of those are secondary bequests, and uh, one of those is a tertiary bequest. What that essentially means is that there would be one or more occurrences 
that would have to occur before St. John's would receive the legacy gift. But in most instances for a secondary bequest, that typically involves um, first being left to a spouse. And um, here at St. John's, a number of the, of the wills that have been made were called mirrored wills, meaning the husband and the wife make identical wills. And in some cases, they first left their assets to each other and then secondarily left some assets to St. John's. The advantage of a, of a mirrored will from a fundraising perspective is that um, one of those is gonna become a primary bequest because one of the spouses is going to pass first, unless there's a terrible tragedy and they were both were to pass at the, at, at the same time. Um, oh, and uh, I went too quickly past that. A majority of, of the estate plans and, and the bequests that we've received have been from um, the millennial generation, who are people born between the age, between the years of 1991 and uh, 1996. And from an engagement and relationship building perspective, that's a particularly important generation. Millennials are now the largest demographic generation in the United States. There's estimated to be 75 million. In fact, now representing a majority of the United States population or younger. Um, these are a more educated generation. Um, they are less likely to be married. And when they do get married, they're getting married later. And they're having fewer children. So these are often some of the indicators that fundraising professionals will look at in terms of prospect identification. Um, people with no children or those who are unmarried tend to um, trigger our interest. Um, so as, as an entire generation, the, the millennials tend to hit on a couple of those factors. They are increasingly charitable and they self-identify as such. Nearly 90% indicate that they donate money to charity. 70% um, give their time to causes and nearly three quarters of them consider themselves philanthropists. Um, the baby boomer generation has only about 35% of people who view themselves in that way. And for nearly a quarter of them, they want that to be their ultimate legacy to be known for their impact on charitable organizations. Um, and they also have a deep interest in their impact. They, are, they, are, they closely track the causes that they support by nearly a two to one ratio versus the baby boomer generation. Um, this is also an extremely wealthy demographic, 30% self-report having a lot of income, um, nearly 90% own stock, um, they like, investments and giving tools like donor advice funds, stock and cryptocurrency. And they often manage these things electronically. 40% are checking their investments every single day. And there's nearly 650 um, millennial millionaires in the United States, which is the highest percentage of any generation. And in just three years, their wealth has doubled to be $9 trillion. The great intergenerational wealth transfer um, is really key for recognizing the importance of investing in, in engaging and relating with this particular generation. Nearly $7 trillion, $70 trillion is estimated to transfer from the boomers over the next three decades. Your typical boomer in the United States has, has a $1 million net worth. So we're recognizing the significance of, of, of that generation in and of itself what we're talking about for an individual family. In the next less than 10 years, we're talking about this generation being at least five times richer. And because the baby boomer generation had fewer kids than the silent generation and the greatest generation, the inheritances that each of these, um, each of these millennials is likely to inherit is going to be much more concentrated and much more impactful on their individual wealth.
Are there any questions that I can help out with before I actually show you what the tool looks like, whether that's about um, the idea of non-cash giving, whether in general or at St. John's, or about um, the emphasis and the appreciation we have for the, the increased engagement we're able to get with the millennial generation? Great. As I shared earlier, Free Will provides each nonprofit partner with a customized and branded website. So this is a basic one for a pretend nonprofit called Acme, but in the case of St. John's, ours is branded with St. John's logo and information, and it reinforces that this is a gift for the members of our community by virtue of the partnership that we have with Free Will. You begin with something very similar to what you might see on TurboTax or many other online forms. You've got radio buttons for the selection of gender. You've got drop downs for, for birth date and your very basic demographic information, your marital status and information about your spouse. And very early on, you'll see this is really only um, within the first four to five slides that you interact with with the tool, you get the mention that while you're doing this for yourself, you're going to have the opportunity to possibly do this very easily with a simple click for, for your spouse as well. Um, you very easily can deal with the guardianship of your, of your minor children. You can deal with things like the care of your your pets, especially for people without children. There's been an increasing trend in uh, the caretaking of pets, as well as the financial provisions for pets, actually. And once you get beyond the demographic information and your family information, the first thing you deal when you deal with the residual section of your will is the consideration of leaving a charitable gift rather than in a typical estate plan with an attorney that often happens at the very tail end. So what that means is that if you take someone's entire body of assets, and let's say that's $1 million, um, with a typical estate planning attorney, the process would be the distribution of a vast majority of that, and then a consideration of a gift to charity at the tail end. But by asking for that first, what it, what it actually provides for is for a larger number of primary bequests, and especially those on a percentage basis, being taken from a, a larger pool of total assets. In the case of, of St. John's being a nonprofit partner, the first question that's asked in that regard is the consideration of a gift for St. John's. If you decide to do that, you're encouraged by free will to let St. John's know. Um, oftentimes in the United States, a lot of bequests are made anonymously, which really belies the entire concept of leaving a legacy in this form. So uh, free will encourages the will maker to let the organization know. And in the vast majority of those folks who have left bequests, for St. John's, uh, we've only had two of them come through to us anon anonymously, the others have come through um, with their information, which gives me the opportunity to steward those individuals, invite them to our legacy society, and be just begin an overall dialogue with them on the things that are most important to them about St. John's. As with TurboTax or any other elected tool, you go through a review and summary process of your will. Um, and then at the, at the tail end, you have the opportunity to either download your will, at which point you could print it out and sign that with the necessary witnesses, which the tool walks you through as well. You'll also notice you have, have the opportunity to email your will and um, the opportunity to perhaps consider consultation with an estate planner profession as well. Um, one thing that's great is that free will knows 
not only the federal tax laws, but the tax laws related to estates in all 50 states. So if you, for instance, as a Massachusetts resident, were to indicate that your total estate um, might be in excess of $2 million, it knows that $2 million is the threshold for the estate tax kicking in and immediately notifies you that it may be worth your consideration to talk to a financial professional or an estate lawyer um, in the process before you even get to the screen. But again, at the end, you have the opportunity to take this document and work with an estate plan professional if you wish. But it walks you through all the necessary steps to make this a legal and valid will. And this final screen just shows you page one of what a, what a typical will would look like. Um, it's in large part identical to that which any estate planning lawyer would, would draw for you. And um, that's the conclusion of the slides and a very quick walkthrough about uh, free will in and of itself. So far, it's been really wonderful for St. John's to have this partnership. It gives us the opportunity to educate our community about the benefits of doing so. Um, we're getting a 20% hit rate on the folks who are using the tool to make a will and those that are actually including a provision for us. Um, the results this far have been meaningful for us and it's, um, it's encouraging us to talk about all non-cash giving more broadly because of our partnership and our subscription with this particular tool. So the benefits that they bring to me as the director of the particular program actually help keep me motivated to avail myself best of the of the subscription and their partnership, um, as well as talking about and communicating it broadly with um, all of our constituents about the benefits of non-cash giving in general. Um, that's the conclusion of my uh, formal talk and my little walkthrough about free will. If there are questions about our, our philosophy, our accomplishments that I can help with, I'd be glad to take any questions. Yeah, Jim, maybe if you could take it off the share screen so we can see yeah. everybody. Uh, and yet we welcome any questions uh, from the group. Uh, and maybe one I could just throw out real quick, Jim, and I know you have a couple members of the uh, team there at St. John's with you. I got to imagine this complements a broader estate, a planning approach. It's it's not the be all end all for St. John's that all your uh, eggs are in the basket of free will. Is that correct? Uh, other other efforts to uh, establish estate planning at the school, I would assume. So we, we have for a long time um, with all of our regular direct mail solicitations. Uh, included in our reply device, the option for folks to reach out to the office with questions about estate plans or to notify us about their their legacies as well. Um, what what free will really has provided us with has has given us a tool to enable people to take action on their time frame um, if, when it comes to estate plan new legacy given given and it provides us the communications overlay. Um, on a systematic basis to communicate about it when I need it. Thank you. Other questions folks might have? Dennis? Hey, uh, Jim, thanks so much for that. I really appreciate it. And thanks, Patrick. Um, just a qu two questions, actually. Um, the demographics that you're looking at, I noticed you did say, and I know you just started this about a, a little over a year ago, um, that the most activity had come if I, if I understand it right, it happened between for the millennials is that's where you're seeing the engagement from the marketing that you did with it. Did it go to the boomers also? And your and how, how did that go? Did it go to the boomers and the, and, every, and all the graduates and you found the sweet spot was the millennials so far for this? Is that what you're seeing? So we actually, um, in large part, send this out in one fell swoop to essentially the entirety of our email list. So that includes all of our alumni, that includes all of our current parents and some of our past parents. It includes in some cases grandparents, and it certainly includes the uh, current staff members within the St. John's community. So 
it wasn't necessarily targeted to any generation. At this stage, it was it was to the entirety of the list, but when we saw at least the most takers in terms of leaving the bequest and notifying St. John's about it, we were seeing about three quarters of them from that particular generation. Okay. You know, I guess the broad-based thinking about asking a person to leave the organization or any organization a bequest sort of presumes that the person already has an estate plan. And right. the situation in the United States is that how do I truly identify the three to four people out of 10 that do have one versus the six to seven who don't, right? So what we've done is we provided a mechanism that people, number one, can make a plan for the first time because in the majority of instances, they don't have one. Or if not, they can look at that communication and they can share with us their existing plan through this tool and this mechanism as well. Great, thank you. And what is what's the what does something like this cost? Is it uh, per per will, or is it just a flat fee, or how does that work? So there are there are uh, yearly fees associated with the particular bundle that you get at St. John's. We've purchased the most basic one, and um, there was a little bit of economies of scale to have a a three year commitment. And Headmaster Zakara um, felt that with anything being in its infancy, it makes sense to try to do it for more than just one year. So our, our current plan is to do it for three years and then we'll reassess its value in the future. Okay. So, I will say that um, even for folks who are not either financial, if their organization is not financially capable of a partnership, any person in the United States can go to freewill.com and use their tool to make a basic will. What you don't get is the advantages of the partnership. So there's not branding associated with your particular school. Um, there's not the partnership with a strategist who can help you customize based on your results and your particular themes. But the tool is out there and can be availed by anyone in the United States to do so. And I will point out that the very, the two first bequests that we got came to us two days before our partnership formally began by an alumnus who came to us um, from California, now lives in California, and went to freewill.com on his own, um, created a will, and entered the information for St. John's High School and the tax ID number on his own, even before we had a partnership. So it is out there and it, and it can be done. Um, the key really is educating people about the ease of a tool like this and getting beyond number one, the procrastination, and number two, the barriers to decide to act. Thank, thank you, James. Thank you very much. Jim? James, I see here. Can you hear me? Yes. You're, break, you're breaking up, Chris, but go ahead. Give it a try. I'm sorry. I'm en route. Um, so I think it's a, it's a great tool. Um, first of I've seen of its kind, worked with PG Calc, um, and I'm also, you know, researching a couple other spots as well. But, um, you know, for me, I guess one of the questions is, could you talk a little bit more about how they assist you with communications? Um, is it just electronic communications? Do they do any mailed communications with like QR codes? Um, just curious. Yes. So every time that there is a, every time you work with your content uh, strategist and you lay that out, the, the general basic communications plan that free will suggests when it comes to the idea of the bequest tool is single subject emails um, on a quarterly basis with a variety of themes. When we first launched, we also worked with them to create a postcard. So our talented uh, communications director designed a postcard and then with Free Will's assistance, Free Will created for us a QR code and that QR code both drove, tra drove traffic to um, our particular Free Will page. So the other benefit of the, of the print marketing library is that there's a, a vast array, whether you wanted to create a box slip, whether you wanted to create a postcard, whether you wanted to create the multi-page permanent giving guide that a lot of charities are doing. If you wanted something that might be appropriate for a magazine insert, there are some samples that um, 
can be drawn on from print. Most of the activity that happens on free will is electronically sourced because it's an electronic product, but there is uh, the opportunity and they will help you create and provide the resources for doing those things on print as well. And I imagine that you're printing and mailing all of those in-house. Um, if you were to, you know, use the old fashioned snail mail, I'm only thinking about that because, you know, there's a number of our constituents who, yeah, I mean, most are using email, but there's, there's a lot of the older ones that still are not, um, or are not as responsive with email. And, you know, we've, we've had better, some better luck with some snail mail with, with that group. You know what I mean? Yes, no, you're, you're absolutely correct. While, while at St. John's, we've leaned more into the electronic with the exception of our very first campaign where we did the, the postcard. Certainly, it, it, it could make sense to do um, something in print for those folks who do not have emails availing yourself of, of the custom URL for a particular campaign and the QR code associated for that as well. And just one more quick question. Have you had any negative feedback um, by kind of blasting out, you know, the effort? I mean, I, I know it's all on the communication, you know, to help people understand that, you know, we're really trying to help you, you know, and if, you know, in, in, in the act, you want to support our community, then, you know, we're grateful. Um, but have you had any negative feedback or have there been any bumps in the road that you, know, you feel would be good to share with us? Um, there, there have been some folks who have unsubscribed from our school's email list um, in response to receiving the particular free will emails, but not in a statistically relevant or concerning way. You know, so as the headmasters pointed out that when he sends out his headmaster's newsletter uh, a couple of times a year that he often gets more unsubscribes. Uh, in, re in reaction to that. So yes, Chris, it has, it has happened, but um, it doesn't happen um, especially a lot. Um, we did have two pieces of feedback from folks within the financial services industry and estate planning field um, initially about it, but after subsequent conversations with those folks, they've now come to understand that free will beyond just the will making tool does offer the opportunity to create the, the four key documents that an estate plan should be comprised of. Um, that free will has these, these trigger points built in that it actually will stop the user and suggest that they might consider outside professional advice, as well as at the very end of the process, the opportunity to search through the American Bar Association for local estate attorneys and other financial professionals as well. So while there was some initial low grade blowback in those two instances, it ended up being collaborative and educational, uh, you know, mutually beneficial conversations. Great, thank you, Jim. Jim Donovan, did you have a question? Uh, it was along the same lines, but uh, Jim, uh, number one, th thank you for the presentation, it was very helpful. Um, <clears throat> So just with respect to the messaging to your community initially, um, so you're more or less just sort of pointing out the importance of having a will and suggesting that using free will is a convenient, uh, inexpensive way to do it. Bingo, bango, bango. So uh, do you imply in that initial communication or in subsequent follow-up communications that um, it might also be a convenient way to identify um, St. John's is, um, as uh, a potential um, uh, gift? We've been, so far, we've been softer with that. Um, we, we really have kind of merged into this lane um, fairly slowly. So it, it was actually wonderful. The fall, in fall of 22, before we officially began, our partnership, um, the headmaster had the opportunity to make a presentation and he was really touched by this particular portion of, of, of the fundamental principles of the brothers 
um, talking about being a band of brothers that helps encourage, edifies each other and works together. So that really became a theme for our last school year here at St. John's and our communications team built some branding for free will, uh, the free will St. John's partnership around that. So we have those words and those Im that images has been uh, a fundamental component of our branding for the first year. So it really was more pitched as a benefit for our community from the perspective of being lifelong learners and being in a lifelong relationship um, that's got a mutually loyal component to it. Um, while certainly there is some mention of legacy giving, it's been far, far softer than the idea of the value of creating a plan and our, our perspective of care and concern and giving you the ability to have the school at your disposal to act on as you wish as a member of our community. Yeah, okay, thank you. And literally the, uh, the user, uh, in this case, your prospective donor pays nothing to free will for, for service? They pay nothing. Okay. Correct. Now I will say, I'm, I'm a member of my uh, local NPR station, and uh, I wouldn't say they're more aggressive about it, but they talk about the tool more frequently. They ask for a direct gift more frequently in the form of a bequest or the consideration of a bequest. We've been, we've been softer and taken a more holistic sort of community benefit perspective at this stage. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? For Jim. Jim, maybe I'll just finish with one last question. I know we're uh, abutting the uh, one hour time mark here. So Dennis asked earlier about cost and seeing your data point about a million dollars in new identified uh, gifts that are in, in folks estate plans. I, I got to imagine, sorry for the cliche, but you got to spend a little money to make money. I mean, this is kind of like an investment. Would you say it's a worthy investment looking at the, the returns that already seem to be generated for the school, given your upfront costs? Yeah. I mean, at, at this stage to, to see the growth in our legacy society membership, especially with a vast majority being in a uh, younger demographic, that gives us a really long runway of, of relationship. Um, you know, I think I would say financially, the estimated bequests being in excess of a million dollars certainly has paid for itself many, many, many times over. The ability to have this as a touch point to cultivate and steward donors on a long range basis um, certainly does. It's not the only way to do it. It's not intended to be the only tool in our proverbial arsenal for this, but it's it's a tool and it's a way, and it's been it's been fruitful um, in its infancy to uh, to do it for sure. And if uh, folks on this call or who watch this later are interested, they can certainly reach out to me, and I'd be happy to share some of our email samples or our sample postcard that that we've done. Or or um, feel free to check out freewill.com and some of the resources that are available to the general public as well. And is there a yearly expense to this? I think that's the question. Uh, yes. So the, the, there is a yearly expense depending on the tools that you get. And I believe it's also based on the particular size of your organization as well. So um, so early on, if you express an interest in the tool, there'd be a representative that would help you understand what would be the best type of package for your particular organization or school. Um, and understanding the costs as well. And and hearing you say that, Jim, and I know you guys have already made that commitment. I'd be curious if other network schools are interested. I mean, we always talk about ways to leverage economies of scale. And if that's, you know, perhaps our office reaching out to the rep saying we've got three, four, or five schools that are interested in this, let's let's talk better pricing. That's that's always something I'm not shy to pick up the phone and try and haggle that on behalf of network schools. But uh, we have recorded this session. We will be sending out a link uh, for those who end up watching later. I do wanna thank Jim very much for his time and effort on this and for the, the great teamwork that uh, St. John's and Shrewsbury is doing on this front. Uh, in addition, we're kind of staying on this theme with the next uh, webinar. Uh, I have Jeremy Belsky. He leads the estate planning efforts for Boys Town USA, USA in Nebraska. 
uh, for the older generation. That's uh, Mickey Rourke, I think it was, or I forgot the actor, but he, he ain't heavy brother. He's my, he ain't heavy father. He's my brother. They have a, a billion dollar endowment out at Boys Town. A large percentage of that is coming from estate planning gifts. And Jeremy uh, heads up that office. So he'll be speaking with us January 11th, four o'clock. We'll get some reminders out on that. But again, thank you all for being here, Jim. Again, thank you for your wisdom and, and uh, great expertise here. Uh, very much appreciate it. You all have a great night. Thank you.